In the 1970s, American Secretary of Defense Elmer Zumwalt proposed the concept of a sea control ship, SCS, which can be seen as a modern upgraded version of the World War II escort carrier. It primarily carries anti-submarine helicopters and vertical takeoff and landing VTOL fighters and is accompanied by four escort ships to form an anti-submarine task force. It can be deployed to patrol various oceans and seas, and during wartime, it can retreat to the rear to make way for the main aircraft carriers while performing escort and other tasks. The XFV-12 carrier-based VTOL fighter was developed as the aircraft for the sea control ship. It was developed by the Rockwell Company, and the U.S. Navy proposed the fighter requirements in 1972. The company completed a full-scale wind tunnel model in 1974 and began ground testing in 1977, which was quite fast for a new aircraft. The first prototype was the XFV-12A, which had high development costs and risks. In order to control costs, the designers used the nose of the A-4 attack aircraft and the air intake of the F-4 Phantom. The fighter abandoned the vertical takeoff and landing technology of the British Harrier, which uses jet thrust from the fuselage, and instead adopted the blown wing technology. The prototype aircraft had a canard configuration, with trapezoidal-shaped canards and a main wing with a large angle of sweep. The vertical tail was installed on the wingtip, with a slight outward tilt on the upper half. Both the canards and the main wing were equipped with large area slotted flaps. During vertical takeoff and landing, the engine exhaust nozzle was closed and the engine gas was transferred to the wing surface through pipes. By adjusting the flaps, the thrust direction could be changed to generate upward lift. The prototype aircraft had a single-seat cockpit and was armed with a 20mm cannon and four air-to-air -air missiles, which could be sparrows or sidewinders. Although its firepower was relatively low, considering that it was only a carrier-based aircraft for the sea control ship and did not participate in the main fleet combat, it was sufficient to meet the basic air superiority needs of the fleet it was in. According to the designer's calculations, the fighter used a Pratt & Epp Whitney F-401 PW400 turbojet engine as its power source, theoretically allowing the aircraft to reach a maximum speed of 2.2 to 2.4 Mach. However, during vertical takeoff and landing, it faced a dilemma. Although the maximum takeoff weight of the fighter was only 11 tons, with an empty weight of about 62.60 kilograms, which was not very heavy and was similar to the Harrier v Tiol fighter, its unique lift system could not generate enough lift, only providing 75% of the required power for flight, making it impossible to take off. This prototype aircraft only underwent partial experiments, and the results proved that it was capable of conventional takeoff and flight, but its speed was not as fast as expected. The company originally built two prototype aircraft, but the second one was not fully completed due to cost increases. The U.S. Navy completely terminated the XFV-12 development project in 1981, so there is no further information. In fact, the Navy abandoned it for another important reason, which was that they shifted their focus to amphibious assault ships and no longer developed sea control ships. Therefore, there was no need to continue developing the corresponding equipment, and the Navy directly purchased the British Sea Harrier carrier-based VTOL fighter. The XFV-12, like the sea control ship, was an exploration of technology and concepts by the U.S. Navy. It was born during a time of bipolar confrontation, and it has been proven that this technological approach is not very practical. To this day, no country has conducted similar research and development.